Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're doing the second half here of the conditional probability independent dependent, and we are talking about independent and dependent. So we are back at the top. If you're following on our note sheets, you're back on the top um, just to do some definitions, and then we'll kind of fill in the, the stuff we didn't get to after, before the first video. So let's do some uh, some definitions here quick. Uh, independent and dependent as far as probability goes. Independent is where one event has no influence on the other. And that can mean a little, uh, a few different things. We can have some assumptions that it, it makes sense that they aren't, or we can also prove these mathematically. We're gonna show you kind of both of those. Uh, and if one, if independent is, it doesn't have influence, dependent would be then that they do uh, uh, influence each other. So one, uh, when the probability of an event depends on another occurring or if it changes. Uh, in that sense. Okay, so those are the basic uh, things. Now some examples that we can, uh, we don't need to kind of prove mathematically. So if we think of um, kind of flipping a coin multiple times. Okay, so let's say we're flipping a, a, a coin uh, and we want heads twice. Well, if I flip it and I get heads the first time, which is a 50-50 shot, let's use a decimal on this, is a 50-50 shot, the next time that I do it is still a 50-50 shot. Me flipping it the first time has no bearing on uh, or influence on the probability the second time. So that's why they are independent uh, events. So flipping a coin has that. Um, or even just doing something also where flipping a coin and... Uh, rolling a die. However I flip that coin has no bearing on the probability of me rolling and getting a value for the die. It's still a 50-50 shot with the coin and a 1 out of 6 shot on the die. Me, Whatever I flip, heads or tails, has no influence on uh, the number I get for a die. Now that changes when I'm talking about dependent or the events will. Okay, so something like, um, let's use a, a deck of cards because that's an easy one. Uh, let's just say I'm drawing uh, two red cards from a deck. Let's call it a fair deck just to be, just to make sure that we're saying the right things. So that means out of the first one, so if I draw a red card, um, half of them are red. So the first one, I have a 50-50 I have a shot. But the second one, since I already drew a red card, now that changes it, or I drew a card in general. Now my overall, I only have 51 left, and I only have 25, those red ones. You can see that this first one influenced the probability of the second one. That's what makes it dependent, okay? To me, those are some more some obvious ones that you can kind of draw those uh, conclusions from. But what if we didn't know or we weren't positive and we wanted to show it in a more mathematical uh, way? Well, we can do that. And here's how we can do that. Let's put this uh, on the side. There's some equations that we can use, or actually some equations that we can show are equal if we want to show independence. So we can use intersections, meaning if I have the probability of A and B, if that equals uh, the probability of A times the probability of B, I know those events are independent. If not, they are not independent. Okay, and I can also do this with um, conditional, conditional probabil probabilities, meaning if I know the probability of A given B, and I can show that that's the same as the probability of simply A, those are independent events. And if not, they're not independent events. So the, And I can also flip this around. So let's say I had probability of B given A, um, and that's equal to the probability of B. If I can show any of these being true, okay, and I can use either any of them or, or any combination of them, then I have uh, independent events. I 
I guess I should say if true. Uh, and they're not independent uh, events if they're false, if false. Okay? So we can kind of add to this and say, well, what are the, if even if I want to just find, even if I do a conditional probability or any kind of union or anything like that, or intersection, I mean, uh, I can say whether these are independent or not independent events. Okay? So let's kind of give ourselves some examples on, on these. Okay? So let's use uh, these cards. We still got some space, so let's go ahead and uh, use that. So let's say in one second, just getting myself organized here. So let's ask the question, are the following events uh, independent? Um, let's say that event A, uh, my card is an eight, and event B, My card is a face card. My big question is, are these independent or not independent events? Well, what do you think? Take a second, I kind of have a guess if they're dependent or independent, even if you don't, if you just kind of have a thought about it. And we will take a look here. So if I want, I'll use, the easier way to use this is with uh, conditional probability. So let's just say, um, we want to use this one, and I need to make that, see if I can make that equal, or if it is equal to the probability of simply A. Well, what is the probability of A? Meaning the card is a, is a 8. Well, here's my options, right? So the probability of just A is... 4 out of 52, which would simply just be 1 13th. Okay, so now in order for this to be independent, I need the uh, conditional property of A given B to be 1 over 13. Okay, well, if I do that, of A given B, well, the probability of uh, it being a face card, which is Let's see. So this kind of, again, narrows down our world. All of these are my face cards. So given that it's a face card, there's only 12 of those, uh, that A will occur. Well, 8 can occur because it's outside of that world, so there's nothing there, which is simply just 0. So because... These don't have the same proper, these don't have the same probability, these are not independent events. So A and B are not independent. Okay. Now we could also show that the other way. So if we wanted to do um, the probability of, and we wanted to flip this around, sorry, and go this way. Instead of AB, let's go BA, and the probability of B. Well, the probability of B, the card is a face card, is twelve over fifty-two, which would be let's see. Oops. Three over thirteen, and then the oh, I'm running out of room. I'm gonna have to erase a little bit. The probability of B to A. So if I just do A, the card is an eight. Well, that narrows my world down to just four four uh, ones, and then B is that the card's a face. Again, I don't have any face cards within those eights, so that's a zero. So again, I still don't have. Um, the same 
probability. So I can do this for any kind of conditional property or any intersection and say, are these independent or dependent events? And I can use math to be able to determine that. Because these aren't necessarily, let me, oh, oh boy. Let me, I thought I could erase quick, but I can't. So let's try one more here. And let's see if you can answer this mathematically. Because sometimes our assumptions kind of get to us. So let's change it where we're going to still say um, that event A, that it's, so the card is an 8. And then let's say for event B that card is a heart. Okay. Even before you start, why don't you get an assumption saying like, are these independent or not independent events? Or what would you think before we before you try this uh, using some math behind it? Okay, you kind of got it in your head. Okay, pause the video. Let's see if you can come up with uh, a kind of a math property here and tell me if this is a independent or not independent event. Okay. So let's try this out. So again, if we want to, we're just going to simply use. Um, a given B, and that would mean that the probability of A, that these would have to be the same probabilities. So the probability of A, again, we already had, so the probability of A is uh, 4 over 52, which is 1 over 13. So I need the uh, conditional probability of A given B to also be 1 over 13 to make sure that these are true. So let's try that out. Probability of a given B, let's change that, there we go. Um, well, B, B the card is a heart. That means that we're living in this place here, which means we only have 13 cards to choose from. Okay, well, how many cards within that are, a, are an eight? Well, there's only one that shares that property. So that means now that we have these two things being both true, we know that A and B are independent events. Which is pretty neat. We can do this mathematically and we can prove that. So that's all I'm gonna kinda give you here. We'll get some practice. Um, and if you have questions, let me know. Send something out. We got our office hours. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Get that practice in. I remember all of this stuff is just is two days worth. So we got some practice, got an activity. Um, hope you guys enjoy that. Let me know if you have questions.